Hi there, and uh, welcome back. This is Thinking Out Loud presented to you here exclusively on the Saltwire Network. And as we have been hearing in the news, uh, the story of our region, in fact, uh, for much of, well, uh, North America, at least this side of the continent, uh, it's all about Fiona and what's going to happen. And I I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, this has caught the attention of CNN. Uh, This has caught the attention of a number of folks who are quote unquote, storm chasers who are flying into Nova Scotia because of a few things that are happening, including uh, what has been predicted as one of the lowest barometric pressures ever on recorded history. What does that mean in the end? I'm not sure. But what I really wanted to know more about is how people are preparing throughout the region. And we have a number of folks to join us here. And let's start with uh, Rafe Wright. And Rafe is here uh, out of the Charlottetown Guardian audit, uh, office. And thank you for joining us, Rafe. Thank you for having me, Sheldon. I appreciate it. And David Jala is uh, in the screen and on the screen and in your ears. Uh, he's here from uh, the Cape Breton Post out of Sydney. Good day, David. Good day. And uh, Diane Crocker, who is uh, on the line from uh, Cornerbrook, and she is uh, out of, working out of the Telegram office. And Diane, uh, thank you so much for joining us as well. You're welcome. Hi, everyone. Now, uh, I have to ask, as, as reporters getting ready for a major event like that, um, you know, we're paying attention to the, to the forecast and what's happening, but none of us really knows what's going to take place. Uh, why don't we start with you, Rafe? Um, what are you seeing in uh, Prince Edward Island today leading up to whatever comes our way? Uh, well, certainly, Sheldon, it's been a bit of a panic around here. Uh, I think people are staying generally calm. Uh, the weather hasn't really picked up quite so much yet, but just this morning I was going around to hardware stores, grocery stores, and everyone said long lines, people coming out with you know, big parcels of uh, water bottles, uh, generators are sold out at most stores, so people are really trying to stock up. Everyone, you can t- tell that everyone's uh, expecting something big for sure. Now, the landfall, at least by, according to forecast models, will be somewhere between Guysboro and Cape Breton. David, has what kind of a sense are you getting from whether or not people are panicked or are just taking the advice to be prepared? Well, a little bit of both. And let's remember, uh, we folks here in Cape Breton like to think we're at the end of the world with all due respect to Newfoundland. So to be in the center of something is actually kind of exciting. There's a real palpable, palpable sense of uh, uh, excitement, but not necessarily in a positive way. I was out this morning. I was at a hardware store uh, where they had uh, just gotten an order of 50 generators in, literally just coming in off a, off of a truck uh, as I arrived there, all spoken for. So if you hadn't ordered one by earlier this week, you weren't getting one. And that's the main thing, I think, right now. There's people that are excited from the um, the event point of view and that it's going to be something big, something special, something historic. But underlying all that is the storm preparedness. And uh, like Rafe said, people are out at the grocery stores, the gas stations, every uh, petrol station I went by this morning, lined up, cars out onto the street, typical last minute stuff. But uh, some of the stores reporting empty shelves, water's gone completely, uh, the essentials uh, like that. But the big one was the power. Nova Scotia power is obviously anticipating problems and uh, people are taking it seriously. Uh, the fellow I spoke to at the hardware store, been there 20 years, never seen demand like this before. Hmm. So Diane, to bring us uh, full circle throughout the region, uh, what's happening in Newfoundland and Labrador? I think people are preparing, especially here on the west coast. Uh, you know, the towns are getting ready, taking catch basements and clearing out gutters and everything, make sure there's no debris going to get in there and get stuck. Um, and people are out and shopping. Uh, I've heard of uh, no water on some shel- store shelves and uh, toilet paper at a shortage in some areas as well. Uh, so I think people are getting ready. Uh, still, it's kind of, I guess, unpredictable. You don't know really what to expect. So there's always the naysayers who uh, aren't, aren't doing anything. But, uh, you know, I know people are putting away patio furniture and tying down what they need to tie down. So the wind, I think, and the wind is the biggest thing. So, yeah. and, and I'm seeing on social media some of that same commentary, which is, you know, why are people freaking out? Why are people nervous? We are a, a community, we're, we're a region that sees weather and hurricanes and tropical storms. But I got to say, Rafe, you cover climate change. And when they're talking about something as dramatic as something as dramatic as the lowest recorded barometric pressure because the convergence of these systems that that tends to get people's attention who know more than what the average consumer does when it comes to weather absolutely um it's one of these things that you know people respond to numbers i think and 
when you see these sorts of numbers coming in from a storm system like this, these are not numbers we're new, no, used to seeing along Prince Edward Island. Yes, we do see high winds and we do see storm systems this time of year, but uh, when numbers like 100 to 150 millimeters, sometimes two, and expected 200 millimeters in some local areas, uh, that is definitely a cause for alarm for most people. So, and with winds expected to be up to 150 kilometers across the entire island and swells that could be as high as seven meters, um, there's definitely reason for concern, especially for a lot of communities along the uh, the North Shore of Prince Edward Island. So uh, evacuation is not a uh, subject that's off the table at this point. Hmm. Uh, David, uh, I know the Hurricane Dorian was the last major system to hit uh, the Halifax region. I'm not sure what impact it had on Cape Breton. You've been a reporter for a while. How does this one compare to previous storms in that way from your perspective? Yeah, I, I, I think the people are the average person is uh, is more aware this time i don't know like you mentioned that uh the, the information coming in and i'm seeing it on the twitter and other social media feeds weather experts from around the world are focusing on us right now so when they're saying it's big it's more it is big and people are taking that seriously uh one thing else i'd like to mention sheldon is that you mentioned storm chasers so be in the area looking around and obviously there's some great footage to be had if you're a videographer um but RCMP have also already taken several precautions. Popular places like the Lewisburg Lighthouse, where you can see the waves crashing on the rocks. Brilliant spot at the best of times, even on calm days, but you can't get there. They're uh, taking it seriously. There'll be an officer parked at the uh, entrance to other dangerous places as well. Hmm. Uh, and Diane, I, I also made note that, you know, while people are preparing, you know, while the public folks are going to stores and lining up for gas, there are people who are working now who are providing these services. There are emergency responders who are going to be working for the next 24, 72 hours. And, and I'm just curious if if at any point, you know, we need to think about those other folks. You know, we're all in this together. We've, we've gone through a pandemic together and this is a weather event that we don't know what will happen. It feels a lot like, uh, you know, the first uh, few weeks and months of the pandemic in that way. I know. And, I, and speaking with like our mayor yesterday, like, I mean, he's going to have crews, the city's going to have crews on, you know, throughout the whole weekend uh, and overtime and stuff. So these people are going to be the ones that are going to be first on the scene if there is something that happens. So we have to do think about that and also think about making the, the calls that we do make. I mean, you know, can I go pick up that tree branch, you know, out of my lawn myself as opposed to calling the city and getting somebody out? And uh, it's, I guess it's going to be tough for a lot of people. And, and it depends on the area too, you know, get closer to the sea, the storm surges, that's a concern. Uh, and you know, for first responders to have to get to some of these places. We had some weather events last year in November where we had our roads, a couple of areas of roads washed out and cut off. So if we see that, that makes everything more difficult. Yeah, but clearly the, the message is uh, be prepared uh, to be on your own for up to 72 hours if conditions, you know, deteriorate to the point where infrastructure is affected. And I think that that advice goes without saying, but it needs to be reassured because, again, uh, some people are just saying, well, it is what it is. And we'll find out what's going to happen after it happens. Uh, so just quickly, as we wrap this up, Rafe, uh, any thoughts on, you know, vulnerable populations, people who may be, you know, precariously housed as the terminology goes, what, what you're seeing as far as a reaction to that? Well, there's certainly been talk about it. Uh, there are community centers that are being opened, and I believe the Charlottetown government has offered a to open a relief center for people who are homeless on in Charlottetown. Uh, obviously, every advisory goes out to those people to try to get to those places as fast as possible, because obviously the lines will be long. Um, that said, uh, there could be more talk. Obviously, um, the city is doing what they can, and everyone's doing great, but it still could be an issue. So uh, a big piece of advice that the Emergency Measures Organization is giving is to make sure that you're checking up on your neighbors and your friends and everyone around you because not everyone might be in as good of a situation as you. So it doesn't hurt to go out and make that call and just go over and visit them before the weather gets really nasty and make sure that everyone is uh, safe and secure over the weekend. And, and, and David, you're, you're nodding your head. Similar advice? Yeah, absolutely. And even here, the Cape Breton Regional Municipality uh, Government is uh, setting up some comfort stations, I suppose you would call them. Same thing as in, as in Prince Edward Island and I'm, and I'm sure in Newfoundland as well. Uh, but, you know, there's a, another, There's a, I mentioned the atmosphere, the, the sense out there. And it, it, when you're out in the stores this morning, looking at people, talking to them, it's almost, it's a, it's a, 
half frightened but half excited thing. It uh, almost feels like Christmas Eve or uh, the day before Christmas in the sense that people are running around loading their car up. I you know, chatted with one gentleman loading a huge generator into the back of his pickup truck. So yeah, we're getting ready. And uh, well, Diane, somebody's looking for you here. Sorry about that. I tried to uh, get it to stop. <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> yeah, it's about the same. You know, you got to be patient and take your time. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to stop, so I'm going to have to stop it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, so, you know, people have to be patient when they're out. Um, mm-hmm. And if you don't have to go out, don't go out. I mean, sure, it might be cool to think to go watch that rushing water, but don't do it. And I know in speaking with the mayor of Port of Bash yesterday, you know, one thing he said we don't have to contend with right now is the cold. So we don't have to worry about people being cold in their homes. Uh, but the town out there, they do have uh, some stations uh, set up that they can open up, you know, need be, uh, you know, if they have people have to get out of their homes or things like that so they do have stations ready for them yeah and obviously a rural concern is uh your water and of course um you know once the electricity is out you you, for most people unless you have a generator that's it you're you're sitting in the dark and you don't have any water uh thank you all for for um sharing your thoughts about this and uh david i it's not lost on me this this is an exciting thing to cover as an event and in, in a lot of ways, um, th- these will be memories that many people stick, you know, will stick with people for a long time. My only hope is that, you know, tragedy can be averted. And that's the real big thing is that if, if we can get through this and if it's only, and I'm not downplaying this, if it's only property damage, that's something that can be rebuilt over time. Uh, putting yourself n- unnecessarily at risk, that's, that's just not fair for the people who have to come find you and help you. Uh, thanks to all of you for, for weighing in here today. Is there anything else anybody wants to say before we wrap? We're all good. Stay safe. Stay Make safe. sure you got your storm chips. Oh, yes. And as <laughs> Frankie told us, be prepared. Uh, David exactly. Jalla, the K. Breton Post out of Sydney. Diane Crocker from the Telegram office out of Corner Brook. And Rafe Wright from The Guardian out of Charlottetown. Thanks, y'all.